Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'll show you how to make mushrooms out of silicone sealer. They are super cute and look like real ones and you can use them for any fall arrangements you like. And I'll show you how to make a lighted version as well. When buying lumber in our local hardware store in the design section I came across a really nice glass dome and I decided immediately to use it for a fall arrangement. I wanted to make lighted mushrooms and first I just wanted to put fairy lights inside but then I found a video by DIY Perks showing how to make lighted mushrooms out of silicone sealer. It looked amazing and so easy to make and I already had a piece of leftover LED strip after our kitchen renovation and some wire I bought for another project so I decided I can do it. I'll be powering the LEDs with a battery pack and the first thing I'm doing is cutting a hole in the glass dome bottom for the block to fit flush with the surface. Right after that Gary has calculated what value resistors I'll need for the project and has told me that I actually need a battery pack that takes 3 AA batteries and the power of the two batteries pack I have is not enough. I didn't have a spare uh, 3 AA battery pack so I've decided to leave it as is for now and cut a pack from fairy lights and make the hole bigger afterwards if needed. So I'll start with the hardest part for me that is making the lights. First I'm cutting the SMD LEDs off the strip and trimming the edges. I'll make some extra to be able to choose from in case some won't work. I'm not a big solver, you know. After that I'm preparing the resistors. You need them so that the LEDs won't get fried with too much voltage from the battery pack. The video I'm referring to is explaining how to pick them and Gary has used the online calculator to get the required resistor value. I'm bending the resistor's wire on one side in the shape of a little lightning and I'll be attaching the LEDs to the horizontal part of the lightning and the mushroom cap support to the vertical part. When soldering the LEDs it's important for all of them to have the same polarity when you connect them into the circuit. Here on the strip they have a cut angle to show the minus side of each LED. I also cut this angle when trimming the LEDs and I'll be attaching all the resistors to these sides of the LEDs. So all the resistors will sit at the minus side. Now the fun part begins or not so fun actually. It looked so easy in the video but in fact this was the trickiest part of all the project. You should apply some rosin to both parts you are going to solder. It works like a glue and lets the solder stick better to the parts and then you want to hold the resistor straight and firm while soldering up the LED to it. You shouldn't move it even a little while it is cooling down and it gets really hot so you can't hold it with your fingers. I wish I had some kind of special holder while doing this. I just didn't have enough hands because you want to have one hand to hold players with the resistor, the second hand to hold players with the LED and one more hand to solder them up. In the end what I did was placing the resistor into the foam to stand straight and then attaching the LED to it. But it was really tricky. I think using fairy lights instead is not such a bad idea after all. <laughs> After all the LEDs are attached to the resistors, you want to solder the wire to the other side of each LED. I'm cutting the wire into pieces about 8 inches long, then removing the isolation on the edges and covering them with solder. And then I'm soldering the wires to the LEDs, placing the resistors into the foam just like I did before. 
As you can see, you don't need a lot of wire here, maybe about a yard for the health project. And you can use wires from old kids' toys or Christmas lights for that. I'll also leave the links for all of the supplies you'll need in case you have to buy everything. Next, I need to add pieces of stiff wire to the resistors to make the future mushroom stems long enough. I couldn't find thin wire except for the painted one, so I had to sand the edges of each piece to be able to solder it, and they didn't solder very well because of these paint residues. And actually here I've made a mistake. If you want to make life-sized mushrooms about 6 inches high, like me, the best option is to use thicker wire here and to attach it to the top part of each resistor for extra support. As thin wire doesn't hold big mushroom caps well, I'll show it to you a little bit later. After all the stem bases are ready, I'm wrapping the red wire around the base and the hardest part is finished. Next, I've started experimenting with silicone. I've decided I want to make fly agarics, so I've added a bit of cream acrylic paint to the transparent silicone sealer for making the stems and the little stem skirts that fly agarics have. And I've used the technique uh, shown in the DIY Works video. I've cut pieces of cling film, placed the finished mushroom stem base on it, applied some cream silicone on top, and then I've folded over the film and pressed it along the stem for the silicone to cover the resistor and the wires. I've tried to shape the mushroom stem as well as I could, making it thinner near the top and kind of thicker near the bottom as real mushrooms have. For making the mushroom skirts, I've applied a bit of silicone onto the cling film, then folded the film to cover the silicone and I've pressed it to get a nice and rounded piece. And after that I've pierced the piece in the middle with a bamboo skewer and pulled its edges downwards, making it look like a skirt. And also I've tried to shape nice little folds on the film. For making the caps, I've decided to paint the silicone red and I've added red and brown to the silicone. I've mixed it till I liked the color and then I've made the caps right the same way, by placing some silicone in between the two layers of the cling film and shaping the silicone after that. I've tried making different shapes here. For making flat cap, I've just added a little groove along the cap edge And for making domed caps, I've shaped them over a pencil or my finger and after that I've left everything to cure overnight. The next day I'm peeling off the cling film and cutting off any struggly bits. And I have to say I don't like them at all. They are so shiny and still have so many wrinkles from the film and don't look like real mushrooms at all. I only like the skirts. Here the little wrinkles mimic real mushroom skirts quite fine and I think I can use the same technique to make the cap undersides. I'm attaching the skirts onto the biggest stems and trying on the caps. Here I've decided to check how LEDs work, I'm trying them with the 2AA battery pack and obviously the red caps are too thick to let the light go through. An extra skirt as a cap looks much better. I'm changing to the 3AA battery pack and here the LED shines much brighter but still not enough to go through the red cap. I'll have to make new ones and come up with something to get rid of that nasty shine. So, I'm mixing a new portion of cream silicone and making new caps. Here I've already had some experience, so it's going much faster. Yeah, this project was making a lot of trials and errors, but once you know how to do it right, it's really easy. 
also wanted to add some silicone onto the stems as the red wire is showing through in places and I want to try to make them less shiny. First I've decided to shape the stems with wet fingers as usually silicone sealer doesn't stick to wet fingers but somehow this didn't work with this sealer. I had to come up with something else and I found the solution – baby powder. I'm applying a bit of baby powder onto my finger and patting the stem gently till I like the look. It worked like a charm, the stems got smooth and matte just like real mushrooms, love it. Ok, now let's deal with the caps. I'm peeling off the cling film, they are now semi-transparent so should work for lighted mushrooms much better. Let's try it out. Yeah, much better, just what I need. But I still want to make fly agarics, so I need to paint them red. I'm mixing a small portion of red silicone and what I'm doing is applying a bit of red over the cap surface. Here you want to end up with a thin and even layer and to make it matte and smooth I'm also using baby powder, tapping the silicone with my finger. Be sure to wear gloves when working with silicone as it can be harmful for skin. The baby powder works like a charm here as well. First the cap may look too whitish, but silicone absorbs it after some time and the caps become brighter and look so natural. I still need to finish the electrical part as I was too impatient to start making the actual mushrooms. I'm soldering black wire to the stiff wire stem to finish the circuit. Here you can use any color of wires you want. I used uh, red and black just to be sure to tell the plus part from the minus part and to connect everything correctly late. I wish I had used white wire for the stems as the red one is too visible through the silicone. Also I need to make supports for the caps. I'm making a kind of a circle or better said a spiral out of wire that will fit the mushroom cap nicely and I'm soldering the supports to the top edge of the resistor. Actually for holding mushroom the best, here I would make the stem and the support out of one piece of wire and then I would just solder the LEDs and the resistors onto them. For bigger mushrooms this will work much better I think. I'm also making the caps and the sides, just like I did the skirts earlier. And I'm mixing a little bit of brown silicone to cover the stem bottom, like there is some soil there. At the same time this helps isolating the place where I solder it the wire. After everything dries well, I'm finally assembling all the mushroom parts together. I'm placing the cap on the side right under the LEDs. In places I have to cut the hole a little bigger to be able to put it on. Then I'm mixing some more cream silicone, applying it over the cap on the sides and gluing the cap on top. I'm covering the seam with more silicone and tapping it with powdered finger for a smooth finish. The mushrooms look super cute already, but as you may remember I wanted to have fly agarics, so I need speckles. They are very easy to make. I'm just taking tiny bits of silicone with a toothpick and attaching them to the cap. Here it is a good idea to have a look at real fly agaric photo to see how the speckles are distributed over the cap for the most natural look. I love how it looks when there are more speckles near the edges and less speckles in the middle. You also want to powder them a little to avoid shine, but don't press them too hard. You want them to stay very high above the mushroom surface and to have very irregular shape. And after drying I'm finally able to complete the arrangement. I'm cutting out the bigger hole for the 3AA battery pack. 
then I'm choosing which mushrooms I'll use as I have some extra and this was a good idea as the biggest ones don't hold their caps well. The wire supports are too thin for their weight. I'm connecting all the black wires together and then all the red ones together too and twisting the tips. Then I'm covering the twisted tips with some solder and I'm checking how to connect the wires correctly. Here you can see if you connect the plus chain side of the battery pack with the minus side of the LEDs it doesn't work. So be sure to check this before soldering. And finally I'm soldering the mushrooms to the battery pack. Wow, it works! I'm awful at soldering, but I did it! To attach the mushrooms to the glass dome bottom, I'll add two pieces of cardboard to make a kind of a small heel. I'm cutting through the cardboard to place the mushrooms outside and hide the wires under the heel and hot gluing the mushrooms to place. Silicone doesn't stick to hot glue actually, but hot glue provides the support needed to hold the mushrooms in place. I'm attaching all the mushrooms to the cardboard like this and also covering the places where I saw it the mushrooms to the battery pack with more hot glue to isolate the circuit as well. And I'm hot gluing the finished base onto the dome bottom, hiding all the wires underneath. Then I'm painting the cardboard brown to be less visible from under the moss. And finally I'm covering the whole thing with some dry moss, making it look like a forested little hill. Here you can also apply little twigs and pine cones and maybe dry colored leaves to make it look more natural. As for the extra mushrooms that don't hold the caps, I'm just cutting the wires off and will use them for other fall arrangements as the air. And the Fly Garrick Nightlight project is completed. I absolutely love the project. The Fly Garricks look almost magical when switched on. And what I love the best is that they are just as cute when you switch them off. You can make the whole bunch of different mushrooms like this by using different silicone colors. And if you are not much uh, of soldering, you can use fairy lights and make cutest tiny mushrooms out of it. They are good for outdoors as well if you use outdoor fairy lights. I'll definitely try to make such for my garden. I hope you liked today's project. Actually, I'm a big fan of mushrooms and last year I made very cute velvet mushrooms. If, if you haven't seen this video, I'll link it below as usual. Thanks for being here and we'll see you in my next one. Bye!